हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अ न्यू लेक्चर वेल फ्रेंड्स द मेथड्स ऑफ ट्रेंड कैलकुलेशन दैट वी हैव सीन अप टू हियर आर दोज टू मेजर सेक्युलर ट्रेंड बट व्हाट अबाउट सीजनल ट्रेंड वेल एज यू हैव सीन दैट मेनी इकोनॉमिक वेरिएबल्स शो सीजनल फ्लक्चुएशंस लाइक दैट ऑफ सेल ऑफ वुलन्स एसीज कूलर्स अंब्रेलास एटसेट्रा सो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लर्न हाउ टू मेजर सीजनल वेरिएशंस Now the most common example to measure seasonal variations is ratio to moving average method. But friends with respect to your examination and that to with online format I don't see IFBF putting a question based on this method which requires some lengthy calculations. IFBF will in fact stick to conceptual questions. So I will intentionally skip the detailed steps of this method. So please don't complain that why this method is not discussed in detail. It's better to save your precious time and stick to questions and concepts from where IIBF may put a question. So here also I will discuss the concept from where IIBF will most probably ask the question and that is calculation of seasonal index. Now friends seasonal variation is measured in terms of an index and that is called seasonal index. It is in fact an average that can be used to compare an actual observation relative to what it would be if there is no seasonal variation. An index value is then attached to each period of the time series within a year. For example, if monthly data is considered, then there will be 12 separate seasonal indices, that is one for each month. And if quarterly data is considered, then there will be four separate indices, that is one for each quarter. Now friends with respect to your examination you will be most probably given quarterly data since calculations are lesser for that Also note seasonal index is usually expressed in terms of percentage Now please don't worry you will understand what all this means once we do an example Now friends before moving ahead don't forget to get your CIB master's pack which is a pack of four books These first two are secret sauce books which are in fact summarized notes and these last two are question banks of abm and bfm respectively you can also get individual books as per your needs all the links are there in description to this video so don't miss out on these friends you can also get retail banking 1000 series which contains chapter wise questions and detailed case studies get your copies today itself by clicking the links in the description lastly always get updated editions since i update all these question banks after every 6 months that is after exams let's move forward with our lecture friends most often in question you will be given quarterly ratio to moving average value like this so as you can see first we have year and then quarterly ratio to moving average values are given to you that is for 2018 values of quarter 3 and 4 are given as 11 and 11 then for 2019 quarter 1 value is 12.5 then for quarter 2 value is 13.5 then for quarter 3 value is 15.5 and lastly for quarter 4 we have 14.5 similarly we are given ratio to moving average values for 2020 2021 and 2022 Now the examiner will then ask you the seasonal index for each quarter. So let's see how to do this. Now the formula to calculate seasonal index for any quarter is quarterly average divided by average of quarterly averages multiplied by 100. So as you can see to find seasonal index of any quarter you need to find quarterly average and then average of these quarterly averages as well. So without further delay let's do an example to understand all this. So let's do this for our example. So for the first quarter total will be 12.5 plus 16.8 plus 11.2 plus 10.5 that is 15.0. And then quarterly average for this first quarter would be 51 by 4 that is 12.75. Now why 4 because there are four values here. Then similarly second quarter total is 13.5 Plus fifteen point two plus eleven point zero plus thirteen point three that is fifty three point zero. So quarterly average for this second quarter will be fifty three by four that is thirteen point two five. Then for third quarter total is eleven point zero plus fifteen point five plus thirteen point one plus twelve point four that is fifty two point zero. So quarterly average for this third quarter will be fifty two divided by four that is thirteen point zero. 
And finally, fourth quarter total is 11.0 plus 14.5 plus 15.3 plus 13.2. That is 54.0. So quarterly average for this fourth quarter will be 54 divided by 4. That is 13.5. Now friends please note for calculation of seasonal indices you also need to find average of these quarterly averages so average of these quarterly average will be simply 12.75 plus 13.25 plus 13.0 plus 13.5 divided by 4 which is equal to 52.5 divided by 4 equals 13.125 next let's find seasonal index for quarter 1 which will be quarterly average divided by average of quarterly averages multiplied by 100 which equals 12.75 divided by 13.125 multiplied by 100 equals 97.143 then seasonal index for quarter 2 will be 13.25 divided by 13.125 multiplied by 100 equals 100.925 then seasonal index for quarter 3 will be 13.0 divided by 13.125 multiplied by 100 equals 97.143 and finally seasonal index for quarter 4 will be 13.5 divided by 13.125 multiplied by 100 equals 102.857 so friends i hope the example is clear to you i have been feel most probably asked this type of question from seasonal trend rather than going for a full fledged point to moving average question which requires detailed and complex calculations Now friends before moving ahead please note case studies plays very important role in clearing CIB most of one candidates who are stuck in this paper often fails to crack the case studies in their examination now if you haven't enrolled into my extensive ABM and BFM case studies courses then enroll it today itself as these courses may be the difference between your passing and failing in this important examination the format of each lecture is that i first makes you grasp the concept and then we solve various case studies in detail So even if you haven't finished your textbooks even then you can even then you can easily join this course and grasp the concepts All the links to join my ABM and BFM case studies classes are there in description to this video so do join it today itself Next let's do a case study that will show how IRBF will present this concept of seasonal index in examination So answer next five questions based on given ratio to moving averages values expressed in percentage. And the first question is average of summer season ratio to moving averages. Now friends for summer season data given is 96.18 and 92.45. So average will be simply 96.18 plus 92.45 divided by 2 equals 94.315. Now please note here we will divide by 2 and not 3 because two values are only given for summer season. Thus the correct option for the given question is option A. The next question is the average of winter season ratio to moving averages and these options are given to you. Friends I hope by now you can easily answer this question. So for winter season average will be 107.14 plus 114.0 plus 118.18 and whole of this divided by 3 which will be 339.832 divided by 3 equals 113.107 thus the correct option for the given question is option c the next question is what is seasonal index for rainy season and these options are given to you friends as we have learned earlier in the lecture that seasonal index equals quarterly average divided by average of quarterly averages multiplied by 100 So let's first find quarterly average and then we will also find average of these quarterly averages. So as you can see from this table that average of summer season will be 96.18 plus 92.45 divided by 2 equals 94.315. Then average for rainy season will be 101.75 plus 92.30 plus 95.20 divided by 3 equals 96.417. Then average for winter season will be 107.14 plus 114.00 plus 118.18 divided by 3 equals 113.107. Then finally, average of these quarterly averages will be 94.315 plus 96.417 plus 113.107 divided by 3 equals 101.278. So seasonal index for rainy season will be simply 
94.315 divided by 101.278 multiplied by 100 equals 93.127. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option D. Now friends, some of you will question that sir, in formula for seasonal index, you have quarterly average divided by average of these quarterly averages. In this question, you can't see any quarter here. Now friends, please note that this quarterly is just to denote a period of time. Now here in this case study, the period of time is in form of seasons. So here our quarterly basically means all these seasons. That is summers, rainy season and winter season. So I hope the application of formula is clear to you. That is quarterly is just to denote a period of time. The next question is, the seasonal index for winter season is, and these options are given to you. Friends, we have already found the quarterly average for winter season, which is 113.107. And we also found average of these quarterly averages, that is 101.278 in previous question. So seasonal index for winter season will be simply 113.107 divided by 101.278 multiplied by 100 equals 111.682. Thus, the correct option for the given question is option B. Friends, finally, we have reached the last question of our case study. And the question is, the correction factor for the time series is, and these options are given to you. Friends, correction factor is simply calculated as 100 divided by average of quarterly averages. But what is this correction factor and why it is used? Friends, please note since all these are percentages, thus in ideal world, the total of this must be 300. And as you can see, this is not the case here. So we will need a correction factor to make some adjustments so that total comes out to be 300. So this is basically the use of correction factor that is to rectify the error. Now friends, we have already found average of quarterly averages as 101.278. So correction factor will be simply 100 divided by 101.278 equals 0.9874. Thus the correct option for the given question is option C here.